Oh, Paul, are you driving? Paul, you're in the car or you're driving? <laughs> Guess he cannot see it. He hear us. Victor, I think we're on Facebook Live for it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hi, Sheila. Yes. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends. Welcome to 2022 ABF Online Talks. Passion for birding. Yes, we come back to Asia this month after travel to North, Central, and South America for a whole month in April. Today, we're going birding in the Philippines. Just as Mike has mentioned in Avi Family, this is the first of the two episodes featured on the Philippines. And our honorable speaker is Adrian Constantino. Adrian is one of the directors of Birding Adventure Philippines, the first birding company in the country. He's a longtime member of the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines. He has been birding for more than 15 years. And his love for birds and wildlife brought him to the wild places, locally and abroad. When not birding, when not, uh, when not leading tours, he introduces upcoming nature tour guides to the wonderful world of birds and wildlife through the Philippine Department of Tourism's Naturalist Tour Guiding Program. He is the co-author of the book, A Naturalist Guide to the Birds of the Philippines. Hello, Adrian. Are you ready? Yes. Hello, Victor. Let's go. The floor is yours. Okay. So let me just uh, share my screen. Yes. Hold on. One more time. Oh. Can you see my screen? All oh, okay. Very good. Can you yes. hear me okay also? Yes, very well. So, good evening, good morning, good day to everyone, wherever you are in the world. So, I would like to take this opportunity first to thank the Asian Bird Fair Organizing Committee for inviting me uh, for this uh, talk about birding in the Philippines. No? So I've, as uh, Victor has uh, mentioned earlier, I've been birding since 2005, no? two years after the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines was formed. So quite a long time now. And uh, it started as a hobby first. No? So, and then later on, it became my profession. I'm a professional uh, bird tour leader. And I've been to... Uh, places in uh, most islands in the Philippines. Okay, so more on that later on. But uh, let me show you. Let me introduce to you the Philippines first. No, so the Philippines is a country in Southeast Asia. It's a uh, two hundred uh, kilometers south of Taiwan, and then uh, the southwestern islands of Tawi Tawi and Sulu here are just 20 kilometers from Malaysian Borneo. No? And then the uh, south uh, east islands from Mindanao, the Balut and Sarangani Islands here are just less than 200, 200 kilometers from Sangihe and Talaud Islands of Indonesia. Okay? So despite the so despite the relative proximity to these countries, the Philippines is still unique when it comes to wildlife, especially birds. Okay, so the extraordinary diversity is believed to be because of our country's uh, geological history. Most of the islands are of a uh, volcanic origin and uh, being separated from other parts by deeper waters. Uh, the country's wildlife, birds included, evolved into the endemic species present uh, today. You know? So the Philippines has more than 700 species of birds you know? and uh, 
35% of that is endemic or found nowhere else except in the Philippines. No? And we also have 200 plus species of mammals, 100 species of amphibians, 900 species of butterflies, 1,000 species of uh, trees, all uh, squeezed into a land area uh, of around 300 square kilometers, which is about the size of uh, United Kingdom or Italy. No? So all in a small, all, uh, all in a small uh, area, we have a mega diverse, biodiverse country. Okay, so the Philippines, we have more than 200, around 300 bird species are endemic to the Philippines, no? scattered over the 7,600 plus islands. No? Some, some islands have several endemics and endemic subspecies. No? Sometimes bigger islands like Luzon or Mindanao, they have, within, the, within the island, we have, uh, they have smaller distinct biogeographic regions. Okay, so the major bird watching sites in the Philippines no, can be grouped into four uh, major island groups. No? The island groups of Luzon, Palawan, Mindanao, and Visayas. No? So a typical trip to the Philippines uh, will take you around three weeks. And according to our good friend uh, Desmond Allen, also uh, uh, author of the new field guide to the birds of the Philippines, uh, a three-week trip can cover maybe around 60% of the country's endemic birds, you know, covering the first three island groups of uh, Luzon, Palawan, and Mindanao, you know, with a little bit of luck and effort. You know? So from my experience uh, leading trips, I found this to be more or less accurate and uh, this would translate to a bird list of around uh, uh, a total of 300 species of birds. No? So for birders with more time, another week of extension to the islands of the Visayas in the central Philippines can add in more endemic species. No? Uh, the, it is important to know, to note, that it is impossible to get all the endemics in one go. No, I know of nobody who has done that. No, I'm saying this not because we want you to always return to here, no, but we do. No, we want you to return and return to the Philippines. So you're always welcome here. Uh, but some birds are just really tough to find and will involve several return trips, sometimes outside the usual months, no, to be able to see these species. Okay, so. The best time to visit will be between November to May. Now, this is due mostly because of the weather. Now, that's, that's how the Philippines only has uh, two seasons, no? wet and the dry season. Or as Filipinos, we joke around, we, we, tell, uh, we tell our guests it's only wet and wetter seasons here or hot and hotter seasons no? so november to february is the cool dry season with the pleasant temperatures of uh, 26 degrees celsius especially in Luzon. No, in the high elevation areas it can get to around the 12 to 16 degrees celsius no? so very pleasant weather no? so march onwards like now no? it becomes drier and hotter no often peaking at around April. No? So late May, we will start to experience more rain as the rainy season comes from June to, so, to September. No? So uh, generally, you can go birding the whole year, no? especially if uh, the, uh, the main target will be the endemics. But during the, rain, the rainy season, it can be uh, quite uh, miserable birding no? under the umbrella, under pouring rain. But once the rain stops, it is still possible to see the endemics. Okay? So weather can vary greatly in uh, different islands. For example, now it is very hot and sunny here in uh, Metro Manila in Luzon. In Luzon, no, sorry. But uh, in Mindanao right now is experiencing very uh, wet weather. Okay, so previously typhoons are common only in Luzon and in the central Visayas region. But in the recent years, Mindanao has been affected by strong typhoons as well, leading to heavy flooding. Okay, so today, this evening, we will be focusing on the island groups of Luzon and Palawan. No? And I will try to do my best to compress a two-week tour into a 30-minute virtual 
birding no for all of us no so consider yourselves lucky you will probably see more birds today on the screen than the actual two week birding trip no <laughs> kidding aside no so we have a uh, lots of endemics possible endemics to see in Luzon and in Palawan okay so Luzon is the largest and the oldest island geographically no so before we go into the birding sites uh, let me just show you a close up map of the island of Luzon no? detailing the uh, different mountain uh, ranges. Okay, so these mountain ranges have a specific subset of birds. No, so uh, the one on the eastern side of uh, Luzon here, uh, the blue one, it's the so it's the uh, Sierra Madre mountain range, and it's the longest running mountain range. It runs from north to south on the eastern seaboard of the Philippines. No, so this mountain range is a uh, critical and it's very important in protecting uh, the island from typhoons from July to September. Okay, so the Cordilleras shaded here in orange, they contain most of the mossy mountain and pine forests of Luzon. No, it's also run, it also runs north to south. No, in the near the central west. Uh, part of uh, the Luzon Island. No? And then the one here on uh, purple or pink is the Caraballo Mountain Range. No? It's a shorter mountain range running from east to west, connecting the Cordilleras here and the Sierra Madre Mountain Range. No? So the Bicol Peninsula here in the southern part of uh, Luzon Island has uh, several uh, peaks no, that serve as uh, island mountains, having their own subset of endemic species and subspecies. No? And then, of course, uh, there's also the Sambales Mountain Range here on the west, and then the island of Mindoro, no, of the southeastern, southwestern part of uh, Luzon. Okay, so, birding in Luzon. So what are the best uh, places to go bird watching in Luzon? No? So here are some of the uh, uh, most popular birding sites in Luzon. No? So La Mesa Eco Park and so on. No? So La Mesa Eco Park is an urban park found at the edge of northern Metro Manila. It's close prox proximity to the Angat watershed. No? It's the major source of drinking water for the city. provides refuge to common urban birds as well as some Luzon endemics such as this gorgeous uh, ashy ground thrush. No? So let me just share uh, a quick background story on this species. No? Before the uh, first sighting of this species in La Mesa Eco Park, no, this species used to be one of the most difficult endemics to locate in the Philippines no? on any birding trip. No? So to, to be able to see this species, we have to go to Mount Makiling, which will I will show later. No, we have to go there very, very early. No, climb up the mountain and then wait for the bird to to pop up. No, in the uh, in the trails. No, if you sometimes it shows up, most of the time it doesn't show up. No, so it was a uh, very fortunate and lucky that uh, we were able to to discover this uh, species in a very urban area no like la mesa eco park no so now it's uh, on uh, most of every time you visit la mesa eco park no it's, uh, there's a very good chance of encountering this species okay so being an urban park la mesa eco park no the birds are quite used to people allowing for good photographic opportunities no so it's very popular for manila based Birders, no, especially if there is a rarity, you know, sometimes a, a very good bird or a rare migrant shows up, you no, know, so expect to see a lot of uh, Manila-based or local birders flocking to La Mesa Eco Park. Now, it's also popular for non-birder, uh, non-birders, non-birder park goers, especially on uh, weekends and holidays. So sometimes it can get crowded, you no. Know? So like this time we saw a red-bellied pita here or a philippine pita now no and uh there's a group of uh, students doing their research project and then we showed the red bellied pita to them no so so it's a very popular uh, spot for for uh for park goers no unfortunately since the pandemic no the the forest trail where the ashy trash and the uh, forest birds like the pitas uh, have been closed no, but the other areas of the park can still be productive for other species. No? So hopefully in the near future, they will start uh, to open again the forest, uh, the mini forest no, inside La Mesa Eco Park. No? So the other 
parts of the park can still be productive for hooded pita, no? And then uh, Luzon endemica lowland white eyes, the one here in the corner, and the smallest uh, of the Philippine woodpeckers, the Philippine pygmy woodpecker. Okay, so next up will be Mount Makiling. No? So this is the site that I was telling you about. No? This, is, this used to be the site for the ashy ground trash. No? So access to Mount Makiling is via the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. No? It is uh, one to two hours away from uh, south of Manila and uh, features a uh, good introduction to Luzon forest birding. No? So it involves uh, hiking and some walking. And the best birding is in the upper slopes. No? So what I usually do, no, like, with the, well, like with my Japanese tour group here, we rode a jeepney no, from the lower slopes up to the upper slopes so, so you can get to the good habitat faster. No? So if, but if you're just birding alone or with a partner, you can also avail of uh, motorbikes no? so to reach the upper slopes faster. No? Photography-wise, it can be a challenge no? because of the high canopy and the dark understory, but it can be good for species like the spotted wood kingfisher featured here. No? So the spotted wood kingfisher, it's an endemic uh, kingfisher to the zone. It's a forest kingfisher. You can hear it singing in the video. I hope. Okay, and the best time to see them is in April and May when they are very vocal and active. No? In December and January, because of the shorter days, it's a crepuscular species and then they tend to call at dawn, dawn no? and thus they're difficult to see and observe. Okay? So Mount Makiling is also home to two species of Marcohas, no, the scale feathered Marcoa and the rough crested Marcoa. No? It can be easily, relatively easily seen in the Mount Makiling. No? Uh, the one on the left, the scale feathered Marcoa, it always makes it to the to my guest list. Uh, guests list of best birds seen on tour. No? So Malcoas are flower cuckoos because of the uh, beautiful plumage of their heads. Okay, so one of the disadvantages of birding here in Mount Makini, no? so birding here is on uh, forest uh, trails, closed canopy forest. No? So one of the dis disadvantages of birding here in the wet sea Wet, wet and rainy season is the presence of leeches. No? They can come from the from the ground or from the vegetation from up above. No? So there's no escaping the leeches during the rainy season. No? So it's not too much of a problem. No? But if you are not too keen on getting beaten, you may wear uh, leech socks no? or spray anti-leech uh, lotion or uh, solutions. No? So, but the reward of enduring the leeches on Mount Makiling is the Luzon Bleeding Heart. No? So Mount Makiling is one of the nearest places for Manila to see this Luzon endemic. No? So here's a video and a photo taken by one of our by our guests from one of our trips before. No? So it's an, one of the harder to see endemics of the Philippines. No? And it can be found in Mount Makiling. Okay, so Makili is also home to interesting flora like this uh, jade vine or tayabak. No? So, and uh, also during the months of April and May, uh, this uh, Rafflesia lagaske you know, or Rafflesia ponchoana, it's an endemic plant that grows from the roots of a specific species of vine and it is pollinated by flies. You know? So aside from the birds, there's lots of natural attractions in this park. Okay. So for birders who prefer easier forest birding or for those uh, for physically challenged birders, you may also visit the Makiling Botanical Garden. No? So with its well-paved roads and concrete steps, it is also possible to see some of Mount Makiling's secrets, no? like this ashy-breasted flycatcher. It's one of Luzon's most mysterious endemics with very few sightings no? and almost all of my sightings. Uh, is, is here no? at, at, at uh, Makiling Botanical Gardens. No? So because of the many flowering and fruiting trees at the Botanical Garden, it is also a good spot for sunbirds and flower peckers. Okay? So forest birding is best done in the early morning. And the best way to spend the afternoon birding in Mount Makiling is to spend it birding in the fields. 
no? or in the rice fields, in the open area surrounding the mountain. It is a good spot to see uh, endemic uh, spotted mountain quails or plain bushen and other grassland and open area species such as uh, barred and slaty breasted rail, white broad creek, among others. Okay? So, nice, relaxed afternoon birding at Mount Makili. And then at night, it's also good birding with chances of seeing at least three to four species of owls, you know, all endemic to the Philippines. But if you get very, very lucky, you might also have a chance to spotlight a Luzon, a southern Luzon cloud rat, you know, a species of rodent endemic to the central and southern Luzon only. Okay? So... Another birding spot in the zone is uh, Subic Bay. No, it's one of our favorite birding spots, located two to three hours drive north of. Manila. No? So it also features Luzon lowland forest, similar to, to Mount Makili, but a lot drier. No? So it's found on the uh, Sambales mountain ranges on the western part of Luzon. Okay? So species that are very difficult to be found elsewhere can be easily seen here. Most of the time, it's uh, very easy birding no? by the roadside a few meters from your car. No? It used to be an American naval base, but has been converted to a freeport and a tourism area. No? So, not much leeches here, no? not so many mosquitoes, and very, very relaxed birding. No? I think this is uh, Mike's uh, cup of tea, no? relaxed birding. Here is our tour group photographing uh, green imperial pigeons just by the roadside. And uh, here's another guest uh, waiting for... Uh, dusk for owls and night jars to come out. No? So very comfort comfortable birding in here with lots of uh, accommodations nearby. No? Just 10 to 15 minutes dry away. No? Okay. So the huge trees in uh, Subic are good for four species of parrots. No? But the most sought after species here will be the green rocket tail. No? It's uh, classified as a vulnerable species. They have a preference to Kupang trees, no, locally called kupang. No, they're, uh, it's a parkia timoriana, a tree native to the Philippines. No? So the rocket tail strips the bark, uses the natural hollows, uh, holes in this tree for nesting. No? So on a good day, you can also get four species of woodpeckers, such as this uh, pair of uh, Luzon flamebacks no? in the bigger northern sooty woodpecker. No? So the non-endemic woodpeckers here would be the white-bellied woodpecker, and then the other one, the Philippine pygmy woodpecker, the small woodpecker. Okay, So Luzon hornbills are also a good species to see. They're quite uh, abundant in Subic. Now here's a male individual and a female individual sharing uh, one perch, no? relaxing after eating a uh, fig fruit. Okay, So other species that are highly dependent on tree, tree cavities, such as this uh, Philippine falconet, can also be encountered on a good day in Subic. Okay, so the road network established when the American base was here cuts through some uh, forest, making it a good and accessible site for skulkers, such as this Luzon endemic uh, Rufus Kukal, no? and uh, other skulkers like uh, Trailing Taylor Bird, White Broad Shama, among others. No? So uh, this uh, Rufus Kukal, let me just share a, a bit of uh, information about this bird. It's a... Uh, it's difficult to take a photo of this bird, no, uh, because it often hides in the dense undergrowth. Okay, at night it's also possible to observe chocolate blue books and Luzon blue books and Philippine lowland scops owl and at least two nightjar species if you are lucky. Okay, so Subic is also has the largest accessible flying fox colony deirus in the whole of Luzon. No? So both species of golden crown and large flying fox can be observed here. Okay, so just a side note, no, for birders with the limited time, both Mount Makiling and Subic can be done as day trips from Manila. No, we just have to start really, really early. No? Especially if we're looking for owls, we depart Manila at around the. 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. And then we get to the birding site and we can do a day trip. No? But it is best to spend at least an overnight stay. Okay? 
So we go sa we do some uh, fresh land uh, fresh uh, water marshland birding in Candaba Marsh. No, this is found in Pampanga in Central Luzon, and it's around uh, one to one point five hours away from Manila. No, it's a good place to see freshwater wetland birds. No, it is privately owned. No, uh, that was left undeveloped for the birds, but unfortunately, in the recent years, this previously uh, excellent site has deteriorated much due to habitat loss and hunting. No? Conversion to agricultural lands and easy access to hunters from neighboring areas has resulted to a dramatic uh, decrease in the population. However, it is still possible to see Philippine ducks here. You know? So the country's only endemic species. Okay? So it is also, it is locally called Papan and has uh, this Cleopatra-like uh, black stripe running across the eye. Now, this species is classified as a vulnerable. Okay? We can also see Philippine swamp pen quite easily in Candaba Marsh. It's a split from the purple swamp pen comple complex. Now, during uh, migration season, it is also possible to see both common and rare migrants, you know, such as bear's pochard, black-faced spoonbill, various species of migratory ducks. Okay? So for foreign birders pressed for time, they can also pass by Total Gas Station at the North Luzon Expressway for a quick wetland birding. And it is possible to see some of the species possible also in Candaba no? for a shorter time and less effort. Now for us, uh, for local birders, this place can be an excellent spot to see and photograph freshwater, freshwater marsh species at close range, no? such as uh, black bittern, Philippine swamp hen, and this... Uh, uh, good-looking fe um, pheasant-tailed jacana here. Okay? So, another site that is becoming more popular now is uh, Canarin Lake in Victoria in uh, Tarlac province. It is very similar to Candaba Marsh. In fact, I remember the olden days of Candaba whenever I visit uh, Canarin Lake. No? But uh, Canarin Lake, it's less developed, so it, it can be potentially better for birding, especially since the local government uh, unit of Victoria, uh, Tarlac, is keen on protecting and promoting the habitat. No? So this site is further north of Manila, 2.5 hours away in the early morning with no traffic, and can be a good site for birders visiting sites further up north like the next set I am going to feature. No? So on a good day, uh, it has thousands of uh, wandering whistling ducks flying around the lake. I hope you can hear the whistling of the wandering whistling ducks in the video. Okay, So thousands strong, th thousands strong of uh, wandering whistling ducks can be seen in Canarin Lake. No? It's also possible to see Philippine ducks and other migrant duck species as well as uncommon migrants such as the Siberian ruby throat. So, Canarin Lake in Tarlac is a good alternative stop for birds going further up north, no? for those birders going to Banawe and Mount Polis. No? So, Mount Polis and Banawe, they're right in the north center of Luzon Island in the Philippine Cordilleras. No? It is home to the world-famous uh, Banawe Rice Terraces, 1,000 years old uh, rice terraces largely built by hand with minimal equipment. No? So, it is a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. And it is described as a living cultural landscape of unparalleled beauty. You know? To get to this unparalleled beauty, we have to travel eight to nine hours from Manila by land, including a lunch stop and several quick birding stops. You know? So it's a, it's a quite a long ride from Manila you know? to, to see and marvel at this uh, living cultural landscape. Okay, so here is our Japanese tour group admiring the Banawi Rice Terrace test, you know, taking a quick photo up of what some consider as the eighth wonder of the world. You know, some, some of the birds of the Cordillera mountain range are quite distinct from the rest of Luzon. You know? It is home to mossy mountain endemics. So the clean and cool streams around Banawe and Mount Polis are, are home to the home are home to the endemic Luzon water red start. Now this one here is the brightly colored male. The female is just plain brown. No? And this one here is the Philippines' only endemic shrike. It's the mountain shrike, locally called Talal. No? So it can be easily seen in the 
forest edges no in a uh, mountain province and in Danao eh, no? it can also be seen in Mindanao no but it's a lot easier to see in uh in the court the Philippine Cordilleras okay so this is a flame crown flower pecker, one of the flower pickers with the most sighting recorded at Cordilleras. No? So it's one of the uh, uncommon flower pickers of the Philippines. And uh, this one here is feeding on a native uh, berry no? found by the roadside. Okay, so this is a white cheek bullfinch, one of the harder to see uh, Philippine endemics. No? So when we saw this individual, it was feeding on a native melastoma species by the side. No, it's a uh, good species to spot because it's highly dependent on uh, fruiting, uh, fruiting bushes or fruiting trees uh, found in the roadside of the Philippine Cordilleras. Okay. So restricted to the Cordillera and Caraballo mountain range is this uh, plain looking LBJ. A little little brown job of a Philippine bush warbler. No? It's often uh, found skulking in the undergrowth, but it has a nice distinctive call, which I will try to whistle here. No? I hope it turns out okay. No? So it's often heard and seen no? because it prefers to stay uh, hidden inside the undergrowth. Okay? So the Southern Sierra Madres, no? this is another site. No? This birding site is uh, relatively new, discovered by intrepid uh, bird photographers in the recent years as new roads east of Manila have opened up. No? It is mostly roadside birding with some uh, off-trail uh, forays into the forest to look for the harder endemics. No? So the southern Sierra Madre, Sierra Madres have uh, both low and middle and high elevation forests. So it shares some of the birds from the three previous uh, forest destinations no, of Mount Makiling, Subic, and Mount Polis. No? So weather here is difficult to predict due to the elevation. No? But sometimes it can be very foggy, sometimes it's pouring rain, or sometimes it's uh, intense blue skies. No? It can be reached after two hours uh, driving east of Manila through the Marilake Highway, leading to the southern Sierra Madre Mountains. No? So there is a good population population here of uh, Philippine fairy bluebirds, no? as well as uh, various uh, sunbirds and flower peckers due to the abundance of fruiting fig trees and flowering plants just by the roadside. This is one of the closest areas where we can still encounter the majesty of the Kalau, no? the northern Rufus Hornbill, the largest and most majestic, I would dare say, no? of the Philippine Hornbill species. Okay? This one here is perched on a nice epiphytic uh, plant no? with red flowers. Okay? So the middle to high elevation specialists like flame-breasted fruit doves, which is also seen in Banawe and uh, in Mount Polis in the Cordilleras, can also be seen in, uh, in the southern Sierra Madre Mountains. No? So it's a Luzon endemic prized by all birders, unfortunately also by hunters no? because of its large size. Okay? So mainly those are the popular sites for forest birding in the zone. No? For many local birders interested in, uh, in uh, migrant uh, waders, the best sites are around Manila Bay no? in Metro Manila, like uh, in the Las Pinas, Paranaque, Wetland Park, and adjacent provinces like Bulacan and Pampanga River. No? So uh, uncommon and rare uh, migrants can be seen here like this flock of uh, Asian Dowichers. No? This photograph was taken last month no? when they're about to go back to their northern breeding grounds okay so rare and globally endangered migrants such as this great nut on the left and nordman's green shank on the right have been spotted around manila bay no? so it's a good uh, place for for local birders to practice our weather watching skills okay so for those who have more time or who have already been to the more popular birding spots or those seeking to complete all of Luzon's rare endemics can visit this remote 
no remote burning spots no so when i say remote they're actually not remote no some some are easy to get to no but the logistics involved in getting there and the accommodations are more limited no so you have to spend more time to 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 be able to go birding in these places no so the first one will be bagao in cagayan in region 2 no so to to get to bagao the fastest way is to fly to tubigarao for one hour and then take a two hour van ride no so to get to the town of bagao no so to so hotel accommodations no standard hotel accommodations can be found at down, downtown bagao no with a uh, good basic accommodations clean rooms with private toilet and bath no and then travel from the accommodations to the birding site is around one hour no? and then we usually spend one whole day uh, the whole day birding no? in the forest to look for the wonderful endemics of Luzon no? so the main target here will be this Isabera oriole no? it's a critically endangered species with a global population estimate of 50 individuals five zero individuals in the whole world no so the huge silver beak is a distinctive characteristic no? and then other species such as golden crown babbler can be seen from well-marked trails no so it's quite easy birding in bagao no the trails are wide uh, well maintained so it's easier to walk no while looking for birds no? So other hard to find those on species can be easily seen here, such as such as this northern black and white trailer. No, so this species is uh, getting difficult to to see now. No, previously we can see this in uh, Mount Makiling, but now not so much anymore. No, so when you go birding here in Bagao, you are supporting the efforts to conserve the critically endangered Isabella oriole as well as other Luzon endemics, such as uh, North Philippine hawk eagle, among other birds. No? So we had a local guide training here before the pandemic through the initiative of the Isabella oriole uh, project headed by uh, biologist Joni, Aika, Joni Akai. No? This, uh, her NGO aims to conserve the remaining habitats of the Isabella Oriole and all the other wildlife living there. No? So to know more about the project and to show your support, you may visit the Facebook page of the Isabella Oriole project as shown in the screen. Okay, so the next birding site is Camp Sawa. No, this is what I consider to be the mother of all birding trips in the zone. No? So it is possible to see most of uh, of the Luzon endemics no, in this uh, single site. No? The caveat, it is actually remote no? <laughs> and it will involve quite an amount of physical activity. No? So as you can see in this slide, these are our cozy accommodations for five nights no? deep in the forest of the northern Sierra Madre. Okay, so access here is via Tugegarao by a one-hour flight from Manila and then we take a one-hour jeepney ride to Peña Blanca which is the gateway to the northern Sierra Madre mountain range. And then we, we ride the ponies, no? small horses for three to four hours, no? crossing multiple river crossings and then another one-hour walk to reach to the campsite. No? So it's you can see it's quite uh, a remote place no, to go birding. No? So, but on the way up to the campsite, there is a chance to see a rare Luzon species like spotted imperial pigeons no, and green-faced parrot finches. Okay? So the main target here is a whiskered pita. No? So measuring to almost 9 inches, it is the largest of all Philippine pitas. No? But... Uh, uh, it has been uh, the whiskered pita has been also observed in other areas outside Camp Sawa. Okay, so northern cream bellied fruit dub is also uh, of uh, of the ray, of the race Faustinoi with its uh, maroon cap can also be seen here in this excellent site. No, so the flame breasted fruit dub uh, as well as yellow breasted fruit dub plus the rufous hornbill and the field, uh, Luzon hornbill, they uh, they come to feed to this uh, species of uh, piper. No, whenever it's in fruit. No? So we uh, I still remember this uh, trip. We had to set up uh, a makeshift hide 
no? because the the birds they come really really early in the morning no? so the first to come are the rufous hornbills followed by the yellow-breasted fruit doves and then the cream berried fruit doves and so on no? so it's uh, one of the very few places in the Philippines where the forest is still uh, intact and there's less, almost zero human intervention, no? human presence. It's a rare Luzon, it's a Luzon uh, striped bubbler and the furtive fly catcher can also be seen here. No? So the furtive fly catcher, it's a plain brown bird, but it's a difficult uh, Luzon endemic. Mm -hmm. And a nice one. Mm -hmm. So it's also possible to see the white bird oriole here, no? So the white bird oriole can also be seen in, in Kamsawa, in Bagao, also in Subic, no? But uh, but in Subic the, the habitat is getting smaller and smaller, so it's getting difficult to see there. And the access to the, the bird inside in Subic is quite uh, restricted. Okay, so this is Mindoro. It's an island southwest of uh, mainland Luzon. And uh, you can fly to San Jose Airport and travel south to Sablayan, which is an open prison farm. You know? This will serve as uh, the base for birding for lowland Mindoro uh, endemics. You know? So Sablayan has six endemic species with the three here. Uh, among the top targets, you know, the scarlet colored flower pecker, Mindoro hornbill, uh, Mindoro hawk owl. Okay, so uh, there is also another lowland forest endemic called the Mindoro bleeding heart, which is a very challenging species with hardly any photographs in the wild available. You know? So there are three high elevation Mindoro endemics including the Mindoro spotted imperial pigeon, uh, Mindoro imperial pigeon and the Mindoro scopes owl, which will involve a strenuous climb up Mount Halcon. No? And then on Mount Iglit Bako, it's so home to the Philippines' largest wild land mammal, the tamarau. Okay? So, one of five islands, you know, we're getting now to the remote parts of uh, the Philippines, we go to Kalayan Island. You know? So one of the five islands of the Babuyan group found several kilometers off the tip of Luzon is Kalayan. You know? So there's one endemic species here, the Kalayan rail, which was discovered in 2004 by fellow uh, bird club, wild bird club of the Philippines member and biologist Dr. Lala Carmela, Española, and her team. No? So to get here, you, try, you fly to Tubegarao for one hour and then an additional two to three hour van ride to Santa Ana, the tip of uh, Luzon, and then a grueling eight hour motorized banka ride to get to Kalayan. No? So eight hours of, <laughs> of boat ride in the open ocean. Aside from the rail, no other endemic species uh, and endemic subspecies can be found here, such as yellow-bellied whistler and short-crested monarch. And uh, during March, you can also volunteer with the balena.org. You know? It's an NGO that documents the migration of humpback whales. You know? That's the best place to see humpback whales in the Philippines. Okay, So the northernmost islands of uh, Batanes is actually more accessible compared to Kalayan. You know? So you can fly directly from Manila or to Gigarao to Basco, Batanes. And on a clear day, Taiwan can be seen from here. You know? So we can uh, sight say hello to Victor from Matanes, okay? So sometimes even the radio broadcast signals from Taiwan is easier to get than from, the, from that one coming from mainland Luzon, you know? So this island is the best place to see uh, Japanese paradise flycatchers or Lanyu paradise flycatchers. And uh, they're breeding migrants in Batanes and Ryukyu scops owl and other endemic species and subspecies of the Philippines. You know? So for local birders, for Filipino birders, Batanes also provides opportunities to see birds not seen or less easily seen on the rest of the country, you know, such as whistling green pigeon and chestnut eared bulbul. Okay, so for local birders, Batanes, hands down, is the best place to grow your Philippine list. You know? So if you want to reach up to 600, 500 species in the Philippines, that's the best 
place to look for new country records. No? So migrants coming from mainland Asia. Thanks to the efforts of uh, Batanes expert builder Charles Lee Ibanez, no? the Philippine list has grown in the recent years because of all these uh, rarities. No? For example, in one single year, Charles, I think, was able to add close to 10 new country records. No? So good job, Charles. Keep it up. Okay? So... Those are some of the most popular birding sites in Luzon, no? but there are still lots of places to explore no? with more and more Filipino birders going out. There's, there are more places to be discovered no? for Luzon endemics. No? The Caraballo Mountains and Central Sierra Madre, Nuevo Vizcaya. No? So previously unexplored, unexplored, but a lot of birders are going there now. Then the, the mountains in the Bicol Peninsula, and then of course the northern cordilleras in Apayao, no, with the uh, with reports of Philippine eagles being sighted there, no. So exciting times ahead, no, for birding in Luzon. Okay, so we jump now to Palawan, no. So this is our last site this evening, no. So dubbed as one, <coughs> dubbed as one of the best islands in the world, you know. If you ask somebody from Palawan, that's what they will say because of its uh, pristine beaches and intact. Forest. Now, Palawan Island is one of our favorite places to go birding in the Philippines no, due to its relatively easy access and good tourism infrastructure. Now, in contrast to the rest of the Philippines, uh, Palawan shares many of its birds with other Asian countries like Malaysian, Borneo, and uh, Thailand. No? Sorry. Okay. This is because of its connection by land ranges to mainland Asia during prehistoric times. Okay. So it's a very long island group on the western side of the Philippines with its closest, na closest neighbors, uh, Vietnam and Malaysian Borneo. No? So the island is home to 23 endemics and most of these species can be seen in the capital city of uh, Puerto Princesa. Okay, so to get to Palawan, we take a one-hour flight either from Manila, Cebu, or Davao, or previously there were international flights going straight to Puerto Princesa. No? So tourism is well developed here and it is quite easy to organize your birding trip with a wide range of budget, no? from solo travelers to organized birding tour groups. There's also a wide range of accommodations no? from basic huts no? to posh uh, beachfront uh, resorts with swimming pools. No? So there are several local birding companies operating from Puerto Princesa City and you may contact them directly. And uh, there are also a lot of uh, licensed uh, freelance birding tour guides available. No? So the closest birding from the city is uh, what we call as a uh, Crocodile Farm or the TWRCC. Okay. So, so a good introduction to Palawan birds is the Crocodile Farm or the Palawan Wildlife Rescue and Conservation Center. No? So it's a 20 to 30 minute uh, drive from downtown uh, Puerto Princesa. No? Please take note that this area, this park, has uh, captive birds no, and other wildlife. No? But the trees around the park is home to Palawan wild endemics, no? such as uh, pale spider hunters and lovely sunbirds frequenting the cultivated uh, torch uh, gingers and other flowers scattered throughout the park. No? So it's also possible to see ashy-headed bubblers, Palawan blue fly catchers in this uh, quite of an uh, urban birding area. No? So quite close to the crocodile farm is another excellent birding site. No? It's called Irawan Eco Park. No? And it's part of the Irawan watershed that provides water for the whole city of Puerto Princesa. No? So this site is best for two species that are difficult to find elsewhere. No? So this is the Palawan flycatcher an uncommon uh, endemic that is a bamboo forest specialist and they prefer to inhabit the dense understory of rattan and lowland bamboo groves. No? So when there's dense bamboo, bamboo, I usually associate it with the 
big, thick flocks of mosquitoes. No? So, note that palawa na sa incidence of malaria. No? So, take precautions before your travel. Okay? So, the other endemic that is reliable in this forest is the melodious tree babbler. No? It's another poorly known uh, endemic preferring the dense understory of lowland forest. No? It, has, it has a nice melodious sound which we can hear here. So nice uh, call, but it's usually uh, difficult to spot and often stays hidden in the understory. Okay, so other endemics include the uh, yellow-throated leafbird. It's one of the two species of leafbirds in the Philippines. The other one being the Philippine leafbird, which can only be seen in a uh, Mindanao. No? So the yellow-throated yellow leafbird, uh, most of the time it joins uh, mixed flocks you know, together with other smaller birds. You know? So when there's a mixed flock in a forest in the Philippines, you have to be very alert. You know? Scan everything because there might be a, a rare or an uncommon bird together with the other species. Okay? So uh, another site, another excellent site is the Pala Puerto Princesa Underground River National Park. And from now on, we will just refer to it as PTUR because of its long name. Okay, so to get here, we take a one-hour van ride on good roads and then uh, to get to Sabang. No? And then in Sabang, accommodation, hotel accommodations of all ranges can be found here no? from basic huts no? and to, to posh beachfront. Uh, hotels, no, and uh, the electricity here is uh, limited, no, but but uh, most hotels they have their own uh, generators or gensets, no. So the following morning we usually take a thirty minute boat ride to to get to the underground river, to the actual cave, uh, to the actual underground river national park. No? So the PPUR can yield species such as. Philippine megapod, and then stork billed, ruddy, and blue-eared kingfishers, as well as other Palawan endemics. You know? So, after the morning birding, guests can opt to enter the PPUR cave. It's one of the Lord longest navigable uh, underground rivers in the Philippines. And you can see and marvel at the various... Uh, rock formations, no stalactites, stalagmites inside the cave. Okay? So, unfortunately, in 2019, the most photographed Palawan peacock pheasant individual died. No? So, if you do a search in the internet of a Palawan, an image search of the, of the Palawan peacock pheasant in the internet, most probably you're looking at the same individual, this same individual here. No? So this habituated but still wild individual was the star of the PPUR. No? So it gave birders excellent views and photographic opportunities for close to 20 years. Unfortunately, he's gone. No? So now it is again difficult to see this iconic species of Palawan. No? But we're working on it. No? So, But with luck, it is still possible to see this on other sites, but the views are not so good. No? So as you can see, uh, I'm here with a group of Taiwanese, bir Taiwanese lady birders here, and the peacock is just there. No? So very habituated and very friendly. Okay. So roads leading to Sabang, no? the, the gateway to the under. Uh, the gateway to PPUR can be good for other species such as a parkated wren babbler, Palawan flycatcher, among others. Okay? So, another good site for birding near Puerto Princesa City is Napsan. It's a one-hour ride south of, the, of Puerto Princesa. It's uh, mainly roadside easy birding, no? similar to Subic, and can be good for Palawan hornbill, no? and then uh, all four wood woodpeck woodpecker species possible in Palawan. The two species here, the spot-throated and the red-headed flameback, they're the endemic woodpeckers, woodpeckers of Palawan, with the red-headed flameback being the more difficult of the two. No? The other two species are white-bellied woodpecker and the great slaty woodpecker, the largest woodpecker in the Philippines. 
Okay? So, floating trees can also be good for Palawan fly, uh, flower peckers. No? So, while in the, the tall, smaller leaf albizia or parquet trees can attract a lot of insects, no? in turn attracting uh, mixed flocks uh, of uh, mini vets, fly catchers, and together with the uh, uh, Palawan teeth. Okay? So, with recent taxonomic updates, no, there are now three endemic bulbuls in Palawan. No? Previously, they were all lumped with their mainland Asia counterparts. No? So the ashy-fronted bulbul, which used to be called olive wing bulbul, and then pa the Palawan bulbul, which used to be called the great chick bulbul. So night birding can be productive with Palawan frogmouth and with luck and patience, Palawan scops owl. No? It is also possible to see nocturnal mammals such as Asian palm civet, Palawan stick badger, dinturong flying squirrels. No? So this Palawan scops owl, the one here on the video, it has a very faint growling call. No? And it's a tricky species to locate. No? We've spent countless nights <laughs> looking for this uh, 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 Palawan species. Okay. So one hour south of Puerto Princesa, Puerto Princesa City is the municipality of Nara, and it's the gateway to two birding destinations: Mount Victoria, home of Palawan's uh, only high elevation endemic at the moment, no? While where we are still waiting for possible future splits, no? So Mount Victoria in Nara, it involves a technical climb up. Uh, Mount Victoria, which is the second uh, tallest mountain in Palawan, rising to around uh, 1,700 meters. It, in, it will involve uh, uh, a long trek across multiple river crossings and uh, uh, it will involve camping near the peak. No? But when you get to the correct elevation, it is quite straightforward to see the Palawan striped bubbler. Other high elevation endemic subspecies of uh, Philippine shortwing, yellow-breasted uh, warbler, mountain tailor bird, among others, can also be seen here. Okay? So the lower elevation forest leading to the peak of Mount Victoria is also good for almost all of the Palawan endemics. So, so if you missed some from your previous trip, no, if you're trying to do a Palawan sweep no, to get all the endemics, uh, it's also a good site. No? To species such as Valcator Grand Babbler and Palawan Peacock Tessan can also be encountered. No? So access to this birding site can be arranged by the Nara Tourism Office or by the local birding companies based in Puerto Princesa. Okay, so the municipality of Nara is the Philippine Kakatu capital of the world. No? So before the population of uh, Philippine Kakatus was discovered near PPUR, this is the best and only place to look for the Philippine Kakatu. No? So the LGUs, uh, the local government efforts, uh, continued efforts to the initiatives of the Philippine Kakatu or the Kala Katala Foundation has made Nara a stronghold for this species. No? So the only kakatu species in the Philippines. Okay? Um, I think this is the only kakatu species outside of uh, Australia and Indonesia. No? Anyway, no? so here is our group no, on a beach on Nara fronting Rasa Island, no? watching uh, Philippine kakatus flying over from their roost to feed on the mainland. Okay, so birders going to Victoria can also visit Ra Rasa Island no, across uh, Nara for the kakatu as well as Palawan specialties like blue-headed rocket tail and gray imperial pigeons. No? Um, Palawan specialties like great beard heron, no? Philippine scrub fowl, among others. No? So the, a visit to Rasa Island should be pre-arranged via the Philippine Kakatu Foundation. So no walk-ins at Ras Island. No? So be sure to contact the Philippine Kakatu Foundation. Okay? So another popular birding site from Puerto Princesa City is the Tubataha Reef National Park. No? So it's after an overnight boat ride on a liveaboard boat, you will arrive at the Philippines' largest seabird colony in the middle of the Sulu Sea. No? So you have to contact local birding companies for arrangement or the Tubataha Reef Park Office for more details. No? So species here include, var uh, include the various species of boobies. No? So red-footed boobies, brown boobies, and the... Uh, uh, 
rare mask booby no and then various species of terns nadis among others no so opportun opportunities for diving and snorkeling are excellent in this amazing place okay that's a whirlwind tour of uh, luzon and palawan a two week itinerary squeezed into 30 minutes no so it's possible to see 150 to 200 to 300 species if you're really lucky no with focus on the philippine endemics and specialized localized resident birds okay so next week join me again as we travel to the rest of the philippines looking for more endemics next week we'll feature mindanao and visayas islands so many many thanks for listening and i hope you got a lot of info from that and if you have questions feel free to send it in the chat group thank you very much wow Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. I can see how hard you try to squeeze so many information this less than an hour. And, and you told me earlier, you, 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 you probably, you know, a little more than 30 minutes. Then you, you took almost, you know, 50 minutes. My God. Really? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's really difficult. I can see that. It's really difficult. All right. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Any questions? To Adrian, guys. Wow. Hey, Adrian, um, has anybody really completed all the endemic species in, in the Philippines? No one has completed. No one. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. can I say, can I say, um, we've done most of those trips. We've done Tubataha and we've done Sawa. 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 Oh my gosh. In so Hamut Camp. Huh? Yeah, yeah Hamut Camp. Yeah. We we've gone with Adri and Mickey for so for so, so many, many trips. trips and they are so memorable. If anybody is thinking of coming, please call Adri. And my mom made the Sawa trip, huh? Yeah. Super, uh -huh. super mom. Yeah. yeah. Doing the most uh, hardcore trip in uh, the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. It was and like Adri says, if you really take the time to do it, it's really worth it. You'll see so many birds. Yeah. Really, just go with Adri. Just go with Adri. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yeah. You must you not know, go to to the right man to to take us in the Philippines. <laughs> All right. Any questions? You know, Adrian, I, I was just going to ask about the the, the Palawan pickle, pickle pheasant, and and you mentioned it, and and you say that you are working on it. What what, what do you mean by that? We're looking for new sites with Palawan pigak pheasants. <laughs> there's actually a there's actually a new site in a, there's actually a Palawan peacock, a semi semi wild individual in a, in a crocodile farm, you no. Know? So, but uh, there's it's still possible to see a really wild one, you no, know, in a, in a other places outside Puerto Princesa City, like on the east coast, in Mantabon Beach, also in a, in a, Nara, when you hike up Mount Victoria, we have reports of Palawan peacock pheasants there. But they will not be as tame, no? at, not as friendly as the one in the underground river. You know, in, in, the, in the chat room, Arakakistan said that uh, he missed Philippines so much. Arakaki, what do you mean? How much do you miss Philippines? Arakaki. Hello, Arakaki-san. Hello, Arakaki-san. We miss you also. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am remembering the last time I visited the Philippines. That Come was back. very nice. That was very nice. And uh, how many sites? It, maybe it, uh, it is impossible to count the uh, barren site in the Philippines. It's too many. <laughs> so that's very good. Nice. Come oh, back yeah. soon. Yeah, Mike, uh, are you bringing us um, questions? Yeah, uh, from the Facebook live page, someone is asking how how they can contact Adri. Mm. When he, 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 in, <laughs> if we can we see your a, company name and website and contact. So me. we have uh, our company. It's uh, Birding Adventure Philippines. 
Uh, we also we're also on uh, Facebook. So this is our company. And if you scan this QR code here, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes. Yeah. If you just scan that QR code, it will lead to our website. No. So it's a Birding Adventure Philippines, and you can there's a contact form there, and you can send an email to us. Or you can leave a message in our Facebook page or in our Instagram page. Adrian, post it on, 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 on Facebook. We, we, we're doing live. Okay? Post it on right. Facebook. Here? I, I don't know how. <laughs> All right, okay, I, I, I'll do it later for you. No worries. All right. <laughs> okay. Maybe so, we can have a group pic picture first. Yeah. Oh, yes. Come. yes. Right. It's 10 o'clock. Let's do it. Wait, 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 wait. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, hmm. Philip. Hello, Philip. Philip is there. And, and Andrew. Oh, Philip. Yeah. <coughs> Are you sleeping, Philip? <laughs> <laughs> RC. Hello, RC. <laughs> oh, Philip. Philip. <laughs> Philip, we miss your face. Philip, where's your face? <laughs> anyway, let's Sorry. take the first group photo. Right? Okay. Hold on, everybody. Okay. Smile to the camera. And one, two, three. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Yeah, we, we expect more questions for Adrian. Fire right away. Oh, Adrian, hey. when's, when's the best time to hit... Palawan. Palawan is actually you can go anytime in Palawan. No? That's uh, that's why it's one of our favorite places to go. No? Kasi, uh, it doesn't it's not much affected by by the rainy season. No? So anytime, but the, it's still the best time to go is uh, from November to to April no? for for most places in the Philippines. AJ, where's the best place to see a Philippine dwarf? I still don't have a Philippine dwarf. Yeah. Philippine dwarf kingfisher next week. Next week. Where? Where? <laughs> no. <laughs> next week in, next in Mindanao. <laughs> <laughs> next episode. <laughs> but it's also it, it can also be seen in the southern Sierra Madre, you no? Know, with uh, with a bit of effort. You, know, you have to go off the uh, off the road to see the uh -huh. Philippine dwarf kingfisher. Okay. Okay. I'd like to see that. Would you? <laughs> I'd like to oh. see that also. <laughs> oh, you go ahead. No, you I've seen ahead. it. Ah, okay. I've seen it, but it's uh, it's such a nice species to see. Yeah. Anytime, all the time. Yeah. Nice. You know, thank okay. you. We're well, from the Philippines. You know, I've been to Palawan. I've been to um, Mindanao. I've been to you know, quite many places. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, right Mike. Yes. Uh, when's the best time for Tubataha and for Batanes? Batanes, best time to be, will be in the migration season. No? So early, around November is good because that's when the first uh, migrants start to arrive. No? So, and then also during the springtime, no? so when they're about to leave the Philippines, that's around uh, maybe March or April. It's also a good time for Batanes. No? So for Tubataha, I think it's around, uh, I'm not so sure, but uh, around April and May, I think, is a good time for Tubataha. I haven't been to Tubataha, so it's still in my bucket list. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> hopefully when they open up, they, they haven't opened up this season, So, but uh, according to our friends from Palawan, no, they next year, they're starting to, to allow tourists again. Uh, Philip is here with Philip. us now. Hello, Philip. <laughs> Philip. Finally, uh, you're here with us. Okay, let's take the second group photo for Philip. All right? Where's Philip? There's Philip. Oh, there's Philip. Hi, Hi Philip. Philip. Hi, Johnny. Please turn on your camera. Hello, Johnny. Johnny. Yes, hey, uh, thank you, Job. A uh, job, job, Maya. Hello, Job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take another one. Okay, hold on, guys. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go on. 
Okay. Uh, do you have more questions, Mike? Uh, no more. No, no more questions. Okay. All right. Oh, wait, wait. There's one more question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adrian, were you able to note down the food that that all the wait, wait, wait. that all the birds ate in Palawan and Mindoro? The food. Maybe what? Which fruit trees attract birds ah. in Palawan and Mindoro? In Palawan, they prefer the fig trees, the species of figs. And uh, makaranga species or binunga species, so we prefer that. And then the insect eaters, you know, like the Palawan pits, uh, fiery minivets, uh, they prefer those uh, albizia or parkia trees, the trees with very small leaves, because the small leaves they have they cover a wider surface area, so it attracts a lot of insects. Uh, I think it will also apply to to other areas like Mindoro in the zone. No, so fig species and piper species, uh, melastoma species. Those are the native plants that uh, birds prefer. An excellent question, actually. That's uh, worthy of a of a PhD study. No, somebody should do a, a study on the interaction between uh, our birds and our native plants. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's pretty late for most people. So um, thank you, Adrian, for the great work. You know, Adrian has covered some part of the Philippines, not even half of the Philippines. And next week, you know, we're going to Visayas and now. So, if you want to know more about Philippines, just, just join us next week. Okay, thank you guys for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Same thank time. you, Adrian. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, XC. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It's always Bye. the same. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Hi, Andrew. Thank you, Mike. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Victor. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice weekend.